Hi. Um, I, I needed a bit of a break. Um, I just filmed this whole clip and didn't notice that the iPhone ran out of memory. So it pretty much just told me, uh -huh. no memory for you, but I have deleted a few things we've, we've sorted out. Okay, Fermo fans. These are the most generic thing on eBay. They are 7 inch, they are under 25 bucks, but they are low profile. They do come with that generic 12 volt, 80 watt fan that they chuck on everything all the way up to the 15 inch fan. Unfortunately, you can't get them more stronger than this. You can in a slightly larger fan where you can get them like 230 watts, 30 amps, they haul ass. But not in this case. I'm going to run two of those at the top. We are going to lose our radiator shroud. People need to know that now because it will hit into the turbo. I am cut that I have to do this because shrouds work so well. But we just pretty much have to mount these. And yes, you do have to mount them before you fit the, the turbo manifold. Because these clips, they're mounting whatever you want to call it. You have to, you have to basically pull the the re, the retainer on the front side of the radiator. So when the radiator is tilted forward, quickly get in there and do your firmo fans before you return it and start working on the turbo. Don't forget that, just in case I don't show it. Turbos are like us. We eat ramen, we drink beer. They eat oil, they drink oil. Well, actually, they might drink cola. But anyways, no, I hope it doesn't because that, because that means something's wrong with your, your motor. Okay, two ways to to feed. That was, that was pretty loud. But right. Anyways, two ways to feed your, um, your, your turbo. One, find your oil pressure sensor. Now, I don't know where it is on this car, and I'm hoping it's not on the turbo manifold side, as in it's going to get that close that we can't fit the following. Now, this is the popular option. You get one of, let me get these parts, unscripted. Here we go. You get one of these. You take your oil pressure sensor from factory. You know the one that makes you like that. You got no oil pressure. This is a 1.8 fitting, 1.8 threaded fitting all the way around. You basically put your oil pressure sensor. They've given you a basically male to, uh, to male fitting. You wind that in there, put that back in the block. You block one of these sides and the other side you basically get your turbo oil feed in there and you get the fittings that they give you and you basically just go all, all the way to the top of the turbo feed the oil a second option i'm gonna be real quick i'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best on this one if you have 80 mil gap on top of your oil filter like uh when you come to put your hand um, um hand and unwind it get yourself then there's a second option of the oil sandwich plate adapter for example sas make them um you, you basically put this plate and put a new thread on there and your oil filter now w winds onto this and it, it pretty much is in the same location as your factory oil filter now you do need the clearance or else you can't unwind the oil filter they do have two outlet ports and they're not too expensive like i said they're they're like around 30 bucks um that could be an option if Hyundai have put this oil pressure sensor from factory in some dodo location, let's hope we don't go down there, but still a cheap option. You guys can laugh at my pain and you guys can pick which, whichever option you want. Now, as for oil drain, because like I said, it drinks oil, shits oil. So they've given you the fittings. You can go right angle, straight angle, whatever, you know, blue and red. Gotta love it. Very colorful. Um, if it was made, it'd all be black. Um, okay, the, okay. The oil sump is worth sixty-five bucks on this thing. Look it up. I'm not lying. You can buy another one. You can experiment with as much welding as you want. Knock yourself out. I'm not gonna hold. I'm not gonna hold you to it. Or you can go to option B because everyone wants an easy option. You're working in the backyard, like me, and you and your welder sucks. Where is my option B? I feel like an idiot now. Okay, option B. Where are you? Fuck. Oh. <sighs> After looking around for a while, option B was hiding. This is option B. Option B. How to tap your sump without, wel uh, without welding it is a no tap fitting. It was not expensive as um, this at all. It was definitely under thirty bucks. I'm um, put up the price as I as I use it. Basically, drill a hole in your sump. You got to take the sump off still. Um, drill, 
this O-ring, rubber seal, whatever, put as much Loctite, whatever the hell you want, go full send on the tightening, bang. Your sump now does have an oil drain option that one of these fittings will happily fit in. Don't say they don't work. I have used it myself. If you fit it properly, it will be great. Option C, yes, there's a third option. Um, if you don't want to touch your sump at all and the turbo sits too low, now this is a popular option with those in America and that mounted turbo in the boot or wherever they mount it in their passenger seat, you know, they always do the funniest things. Or if you basically are running like an LS1 V8 and you want to run twin turbos really like low and you can't drain the oil through, you know, the gravity. I love that word. I always get stuck on it. So you run a scavenge setup. So what is a scavenge setup? You basically get your oil drain, you run to like a tank. It's like, um, how do I explain it? It's like an oil catch can. The oil goes in there and then you basically put an, 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 an electric oil pump. Uh, they start from 60 bucks for a noisy unit and all the way up to like 300 bucks for a, a, a video unit. And then basically you can pump that oil that this turbo drains anywhere you want. A lot of people take the rocket cover off. They put a brass barb fitting. They tap it and then they put it back on there and then they just run the oil there. That is an option. So it's there's always options for options. Um, not expensive again. They start from around maybe 100, 110 bucks, all the way up to whatever you want to spend. You know, 300, 350 bucks. Um, until I'm there, until I'm working on the car, I can't tell you what I'm going to use, but I have shown you everything. And you guys can pick at home. You can be like, oh yeah, I'll do that. I won't do that. And um, I think it's best we start on the car. Whatever we use, we use. Whatever we don't use, there's always another project, just like that other turbo. See, now the turbo, it's got all the bells and whistles and it's ready to go. Now I'm just going to go and make the car and bolt up um, because uh, hopefully we don't need to take it off anymore because long story short, you can still access the sump with the turbo on there, but you want to know where you want the oil return line to go. So the turbo will be a good indicator of where to aim it and before we do all our marking. So I go under there, I'll bolt that up and then we'll jump to the next step. Usually the wastegate hose pressure, uh, pressure boost reference, whatever you want to call it, is usually short on these. Um, if you have the hose, make it pretty long. And I'll tell you why. It's because one day when you are going to, let's say put a boost controller, trying to T-piece this or tap off this, something that's so short, you're not going to have fun when you're under the car. If, if this was a top mount, wouldn't be an issue. Um, so I'm just going to basically just give it a big loop. That's still going to run the gate pressure, which is 7 pounds, 7 PSI for those playing at home. And um, But in the future, I can easily access that from the top or like, you know, from underneath, just go and put a boost controller if I do want to wind it up. So keep your options open. Be good to yourself sometimes. A few extra seconds of work will go a long way. Houston, we have a problem. As I was filming, and editing my footage, I noticed that I've lost a big chunk of footage in regards to the oil feed. 
So I'm nearing the end of the project. I've just looked, I go, oh, okay, so I better quickly explain this. Now I've, I've got photos. Hopefully I can put them up as I'm talking now. If not, I've got them on the Instagram, Rocket Powered Ramen. Um, I'll just quickly explain with some very poor uh, um, diagrams. That's the engine, that's the exhaust block. There's a water pipe, you'll see it on the gets. It's like a steel pipe going across. Right underneath it, you'll see like a lime green wire that goes into a rubber cap. You take the cap off. That is the oil pressure sensor. You disconnect it. You need a 20 something mil socket. It will come out very close to this pipe. So what I did was I, I used a four way brass fitting from AliExpress. I, I put the, no, from eBay, sorry. I put the mail to mail um, threaded fitting in there. I started tightening it back in there and just before the last turn I was I put the the oil pressure sensor the factory one back on there and then the last turn I lifted it I turned it the oil pressure sensor now sits behind this pipe because there's just that little bit of a gap now I had to use the AliExpress 45 degree angle fitting um and basically angle it away from the turbo manifold because it is pretty tight in there and then I, I did the, the, the oil feed with a big loop in the engine bay because they somehow give you like, like almost a made of line. And the bottom port of that, um, of the actual, um, the oil distributor or whatever you want to call it, you do block it up. Um, they do give you the fittings. Um, so yeah, it's something like that, how tight it is. Like if you look at the, the engine block and that, it is doable. You can use the, the oil sandwich plate. If you don't want to do it, but like I said, I lost that footage and I know someone will be watching and thinking, hey, hang on, you just skip something. Um, but like I said, I've got good photos online that, that, that show how it is. And yeah, so we'll just keep going on with the project. Just thought I'd have to throw that in there. Yeah, you can see this thing, this banjo fitting. Now I need to fit the actual oil feed line there, loop it, and bring it underneath the car, which I'll show you quickly. Bear with me. See that blue fitting you see there? Look at that. Yeah, that one there. Somehow I got to fit it on that. I hope I haven't closed myself in. And even more importantly, hopefully when we turn on it, it doesn't leak because I think this thing's in the way and we, we sh probably should have fitted the oil feed. But I'm going to give it a crack. You know, it, it doesn't hurt to try. Um, I'll probably do it off camera because I'm not going to be able to see anything the way I'm going. And, and I'll get back to it. Okay, the oil line's on. But, yeah, I'm not too happy with it. Um, look at my finger. I'll show you where it is. See that? So there's a bit of a right angle there. Um, it's touching the radiator. Now, the engine does rock. Now, this could be an issue in the future. Now, I'm not too sure. Um, it was up to me. I'd get other fittings. I would have probably preferred if there was a fitting where you can go directly straight into the turbo. Um, I'll see. I'll sleep on it. If it, if it uh, haunts me in my dreams... Um, I'll probably change the fitting. The fitting I'm talking about is this is for the other turbo. Like that. See how that goes from the top? That would have been a lot better in this case. Whereas, yeah, I'll show you, it shouldn't hit into the exhaust if we just went directly straight. See that? But, like I said, things happen for a reason, I guess. And it might actually be great, but it does fit. So, um,. It's looking very like factory like if the you know, they made it they'd make it a pain in the ass and this is a pain in the ass okay so now um the oil sump has to be uh taken off and we can put the oil drain in there but um a section of exhaust has to be taken off because it's kind of in the way i'll show you huh? 
Um, see where that flexi pipe is, this thing right in front of you? Basically, that goes all the way around and, and basically on that side of the front axle, there's two bolts and then we can, I'll just rip this off, this is just loosely fitted, take the sump and then I'll, I'll explain what I'm going to be doing next. So best thing to do is take this off and push ahead. Uh, keep in mind there is an oxygen sensor that has to be removed. The plug's up here and there's a little plastic like a um, mounting clip. That's easy. A bit of pliers will take that off. So we've got to just make sure we disconnect that before we yank it out and then tear it up. Just in case you want to know how did I get this out, um, you're going to have to, when you unbolt it, it's, you, you take it out from the back of the car to the front. So you basically have to wiggle it over the front axle and basically it comes out engine side. You won't be able to, to, um, uh, to wiggle it out the other way because it's pretty chunky. But it, it does work. Just be uh, patient with it and you, you will get it through. Just a bit of, you know, left, right. So that's how we'll deal with the oxygen sensor a bit later. Now we can access the sump. Um, we'll probably empty the sump out. You can leave it for if you want and if you like a big mess. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to empty the sump from its oil and then we'll start unbolting it. Okay, now I'm under the car. Sorry if the camera works a bit, you know, shoddy down here because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I can't see it. Um, the oil drain um, fitting now has to be fitted. Now, obviously, when you look here, you have to look around you before you start. And I want to make some markings. Now, we're going to go on the lumpy part of the sump here. Now, but I don't know if there's any baffling in here. So, we're going to mark two places. Now, I'm thinking... Because this exhaust has to steer to the left here and go down this gap of the sump, like the like the factory issue, if you want to call it that. Um, I'm thinking maybe the oil, the oil drain will will go down a bit to the front, steer be, be, behind this this pipe, and I'm hoping it, um, either it will go here at the front of the sump or pretty much on the side here now. I am going to mark up the two places, and in the event that this pipe is in the way, then um, what I'll do is I'll show you. Then I'll probably just go across and basically heat wrap the exhaust pipe and heat wrap the, the pipe and heat wrap the oil drain, and it should be okay. But I am going to make my two markings where I want it, and then we'll then we'll take this off, and hopefully it's not a, it's not really like dried on there, stuck.